tutorial with an empty After Effects project because there are some important settings to understand when importing layered Photoshop and layered Illustrator files. We'll be importing a layered Illustrator file, but the process will be exactly the same for importing a layered Photoshop document. Let's double click in the empty space of the project panel to open the import file dialog. Go ahead and navigate to the assets folder, which is saved right next to your project files in the work with compositions folder. If you don't have these files, you can feel free to follow along with your own layered Photoshop or layered Illustrator files. Once you're in the Assets folder, click once on the Owl Preserve Illustrator file, and then go down to the Import As options and click on the drop-down menu. Choose Composition Retain Layer Sizes. I'll explain what that means in a second, but for now, with that option selected, go ahead and click the Import button to import the file and automatically create a composition. If we look in the Project panel with that composition selected, the duration is 10 seconds. After Effects will choose the duration based on the last composition you created, so your composition settings may not be the same as mine. If you ever need to change your composition settings, just remember you can select the composition in the project panel and press Ctrl-K on Windows or Command-K on the Mac to open the composition settings. Then you can change the duration and click OK. I'm going to leave mine set at 10 seconds. Let's double click on the composition in the project panel to open the timeline and the preview in the composition panel. If we look in the timeline, you'll notice there are many layers that make up this graphic. I'm going to hover over the top of the timeline till I get the double arrows and drag up until I can see all nine layers that make the composition. Now let's create a very straightforward animation. I want the owl to fade into the scene and then the text to fade underneath of it. Let's hover over the text in the composition panel and click once and you notice when that layer is selected I have control handles that are right around the edges of that layer. The handles only stay close like this when you choose the retain layer sizes option on import. Without that option, the layer handles for every layer will automatically be the same as the edges of the composition, which can sometimes make animation quite challenging. Now with my text layer selected, which is layer 8, let's click on that and drag it to the top of the layer hierarchy in the timeline. Since all the text is on one layer, it's going to be very straightforward to create animation with this layer. Press T to open the opacity settings. Now we'll animate this in a quick second. I want to animate the appearance of the owl all at once. And if you notice, there are many different layers that make up this owl. And if you're not sure what part of the owl a layer contains, you can go ahead and toggle the layer visibility off and on. Now rather than adding keyframes for all these layers, let's go ahead and duplicate the green layer and fade that over top of the owl. So go down to the bottom of the timeline and select layer 9. Press Ctrl D on Windows or Command D on the Mac to duplicate the layer. Click on the new duplicate layer and drag it up just below our top layer so now it inhabits layer 2. Press T to open the opacity settings for that layer. Since the current time indicator is already at frame zero, all I have to do is click on the stopwatch for the opacity, and now I've set my first keyframe. I'll move my current time indicator down to one second at the timeline, and then I'll change the opacity setting from 100 to zero. And you notice if we scrub the current time indicator, it appears as though the owl is fading into the scene, when in fact we're actually just fading out the green layer that's above it. Use the navigational arrows to position yourself on the second keyframe. And let's trim the start of the owl preserve layer by hovering over the left edge and clicking and dragging. Just make sure to hold shift after you start to drag and that'll snap the endpoint to the current time indicator. Since we want the words to fade in, let's change the opacity setting from 100 to 0 and then click on the stopwatch to create our first keyframe. To move one second down the timeline, let's click on the time indication and then type plus 100 and press enter and now the current time indicator is one second further down the timeline. Let's change the opacity setting up to 100 and now we have a second keyframe, which of course creates animation. I'll move my current time indicator back to the beginning of the timeline and press the space bar to preview the animation. Now, creating your layered graphics in Illustrator or Photoshop can often speed up your motion graphics workflow, since the tools in those applications are custom designed to help you create complex custom shapes and graphics a little more quickly than you could natively in After Effects. And since After Effects will retain layer settings and blend modes, it's easy enough to import those elements into After Effects for your final animation. the time when we get to the effects part of After Effects. Effects are in essence additional settings you can apply to layers to help achieve a specific look or style. Let's jump right into our project and apply a few effects to visually spice things up a bit. Let's start by previewing our animation. Click once in the timeline area to make sure the timeline panel is active, then press the spacebar to begin playback. If we look at our project you can see I have a background video layer, a green solid color wash, and then a logo on top of that. I'll press the spacebar to stop playback, and then press the home key on my keyboard to move the current time indicator back to frame zero. To start, I want the logo to pop off the background a bit, so to do that, I want to blur out the background over time. I want the background to start sharp and then get blurry. So let's select layer 3, which is our background video layer, and apply a blur effect. Go up to the menu bar under effect, and then you'll notice all of the effects are grouped according to the kinds of effects. 
Since we want to apply a blur, let's go to Blur and Sharpen, then choose Fast Box Blur. Notice the Effect Controls panel popped up. If you need to see the project panel, you can just click on the double arrows here and go back to the project panel. Then if you want to bring Effect Controls back, just click on the words Effect Controls and that'll bring that panel forward. Since my current time indicator is on frame zero, let's add a keyframe for the blur radius set to zero. We can do that here in the effect controls panel just by clicking the stopwatch to the left of the words blur radius. Let's move two seconds down the timeline. Now I'm not sure exactly how blurry I want this to be, so I'll go back up to my effect controls panel and scrub on the blur radius parameter just by clicking and dragging to the right. I really like how this pops with the setting close to 50. Now I know you're thinking, well, where are my keyframes? I've been applying them and I don't see them in the timeline. To reveal any animated properties on a layer, just make sure that layer is selected and then press the U key and that will show you the animated parameters. Click on the current time indicator and drag back and forth to preview what this is doing. And you'll notice now we've added a nice blur that happens over two seconds. As the background layer starts to blur at about one second in, this is when I want the logo to actually start to appear. Now to animate the logo, I want to use an effect called the Tyler effect. So I'm going to select layer one. And since I know the name of the effect I'd like to apply, I'll go to the effects and presets panel here on the right side of the interface. Click once in the search field and then type the word T-I-L-E-R. The distort filter CC Tyler pops up. I'll click on that filter and drag it and drop it right on top of my logo here in the composition panel. When I let go, it's going to take a second and I know my effect has been applied. I know it's applied to the logo because it's listed up here in the top of the effect controls panel. Effects are also listed in the timeline. If we come to the middle section of the timeline, this area is called the switches section. And whenever you see the letters FX, that's a switch that allows you to toggle the effect on or off for the individual layer. Now let's check out the CC Tyler effect and see if we can make this logo animation pop a little bit. On the scale parameter in the effect controls panel, click and drag to the left to scrub that parameter down to a setting of zero. Scrubbing on the effect parameter gives you a good preview as to what you can achieve with that effect. So let's set our scale to a setting of zero and click on the stopwatch to add a keyframe. Now let's move about two seconds down the timeline. I'll click down here in the timeline and since I wasn't exactly on one second, I'll just highlight the numbers and I'll type plus two zero zero. And when I press enter, notice it moved me exactly two seconds down the timeline. Now let's change the scale setting of our Tyler effect up to 100% and press enter. To preview our animation, we can actually go to the preview panel here and click the leftmost button to move the current time indicator back to the beginning of the timeline, and then press the play button to play things back. By applying effects, we've definitely spiced things up a bit. So if you know what effect you're going to apply, you can always search for the effect by name in the effects and presets panel. And if you're ever not quite sure what an effect might look like, go ahead and apply it to a layer and scrub in the effect controls panel to preview the effect.